In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple Monte Carlo simulation using MATLAB. So Monte Carlo is a basic sampling approach to simulating physical phenomena. Uh, it's used in many areas. Risk analysis in business or the financial markets is a common application now. In my field, um, particle transport is often done with Monte Carlo analysis. You can do component reliability, molecular modeling, there's all sorts of applications. So this is going to be a very basic demonstration uh, that would lead you into some of those areas if you're interested. So in this case, we're going to do an example of a bending of a beam. And the idea is that you're going to manufacture lots of these beams, and they won't all be exactly the same. And the loads on them won't ex be exactly what you expect them to be. And so there's some variability in all these input parameters. And what we want to look at is what's the effect on the output. So the main parameters in terms of calculating the displacement of the end of the beam, and you can think of this beam like a diving board. It's a beam that's fixed at one end and free at the other end. Main parameters are the diameter of the cross-section, the load, the modulus, the elastic modulus, which is an, a material property, and the length. And what we're going to do is fix the length to 10 centimeters and let the rest vary. So D, F, and E all will be random inputs. And what we want to look, is the out, look at is the output delta. So this is just a graphic of what it looks like. The beam is fixed at this end here on the left. It's got a force F at the other end. It's going to bend down here at the right edge. That displacement at the right edge is given by FL cubed over 3EI. And I is the moment of inertia of the cross section, which is pi D to the fourth over 64. And F and I um, and E are all random parameters. I, because D is random, F and E will be prescribed. So um, if only f were random, the, the displacement is linear in f. So if, for example, we had a log normal distribution for the forces, we would have a log normal distribution for the deflection. But um, the other parameters are not so simple. And when you put them all together, it's not obvious looking at it what the distribution will, be look, will look like for the deflection as a function of all these other distributions. Okay, so one way to address this is with the sampling approach. So the idea is you assume you know these distributions for all these input variables, the force, the, dis the diameter, and the modulus. And there, I could do um, a whole lecture on that alone, but we're going to just assume we know these input distributions. That is, we know the probability that each of those inputs will take on a certain value. What we're going to do is we're going to randomly sample each of these such that overall the entire sample fits the input distribution. Then for each of those random samples of the three input variables, we calculate a deflection. Um, and then we do that a whole bunch of times, and we get a whole bunch of deflections. And if we do it enough, then that deflection will represent that deflection distribution, that set of outputs will represent accurately the distribution of the output deflection. So um, I'm going to, just for simplicity, assume that E, D, and F all have uniform distributions. That is, they have equal probability of lying between some interval A and B and zero probability outside it. This is not a very realistic distribution, but it's easy to use for demonstration. If you can do it for this, you can do it for a variety of distributions. And MATLAB, if you, especially if you have the statistics toolkit, lets you um, deal with all sorts of different kinds of distributions. Okay. So anyway, um, our force is going to assume to have a minimum value of 1,000 newtons and a maximum value of 1,050. And a, again, a uniform probability of occurring anywhere between those two. The diameter is um, between 1 centimeter and 1.1 centimeters. The modulus is between 200 and 210 gigapascals. So this is a script to do one sampling. Um, that is, sample each of the three random parameters once and calculate a, a displacement based on those. So the key to this, we set the length. I said that was fixed to be 10 centimeters. Um, 
and then the next line gives uh, an example of how to do um, a, a random sampling of one of the force once. Okay, so this command R A N D of one tells uh, gives us um, one return of a random number uniformly distributed between zero and one. Okay, if we want to take that and have it distribute give us a force that goes from 1,000 to 1,050 newtons, what you do is you just take the minimum value, 1,000, right here, and add 50 times that random number between 0 and 1, and it'll give us a number somewhere between 0 and 50 with equal probability lying between, okay? Rand of 1 gives us one uniformly distributed random number between 0 and 1. Okay, so we do the same thing for the diameter and the modulus. That gives us three random numbers. We calculate one moment of inertia based on that diameter, and then we calculate one displacement. That's it. So all we have to do is repeat this a bunch of times. Okay, so for an old Fortran programmer like me, the easiest way to do that is with a for loop. Okay, so I decided to do 100,000 samples and I just say 4 equals 1 to n samples, I do what I just did, and I just save the displacement as the as the ith um, sample. And I'll end up with 100,000 elements in, in the displacement vector, each of them being a randomly, um, a random value for this output. All right. But there's another way to do that in MATLAB that's probably smarter, and that's what I call a direct approach. Um, and that is to do it all at once. So what I do is decide how many samples I want. And this rand of n samples comma 1 gives me a vector of uniformly distributed random numbers. Again, r uniform between 0 and 1. So when I multiply by 50 and add 1,000, I get a vector of uniformly distributed forces. I get all 100,000 all in one command. I don't need to do a loop. I can do the same with the diameter and the modulus. Um, I calculate the moment of inertia. Note I use this dot prep, um, operator here. Dot caret is exponentiation, but the dot says do it element by element. So rather than taking this diameter vector and trying to multiply it by itself using vector math four times, it just takes each element in the diameter vector and and takes it to the fourth power. Okay. Then when I do the displacement, I do the same thing. I use this vector. I use this dot operator dot times dot divide twice and that says do all this element by element and so this one command gives me a hundred thousand displacements okay a vector of a hundred thousand displacements randomly distributed according to the assumed random distributions of the inputs and so um, the reason we do this is because it's much faster and I did a simple run of each of those with a hundred thousand samples I use the tick and talk commands in MATLAB to time them, and I got 3.9 seconds for the loop and 0.15 seconds for um, the direct approach, and so it's about 30 times faster doing that. And, and so um, even though the loop might be intuitive for an old-time programmer, the, the vector-based approach is much more efficient in MATLAB. Okay. The last thing we need to do is look at our results. Um, now that we have this randomly distributed output, we can look at the minimum, the maximum, we can look at the mean, the standard deviation, all those are obvious. Um, but it's even more um, common to look at a histogram. So there's a hist command, which will look at, at a histogram of the displacement data, um, in this case using 50 um, 50 groups in the histogram and if I do that it looks like this so there's 50 bars here and this tells us um, how many times how many of those hundred thousand samples fall within a certain range and so you see that the results are skewed towards the lower end okay the maximum is up around 3.6 millimeters for the displacement minimum around 2.2 and um, the peak, the most common values are right around a little above 2.4. Okay, so from that and these other characteristics, um, we can basically see the distribution of the outputs. And if you just take that to the next level, you can do things like random walk or some of these risk analyses that you that you might encounter. So that's about it. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Thanks.